EA Sports. It's in the game. You know, last year was every, it was everything you see on Sunday. And, you know, this year taking it to the next level, what was sort of the, how were you thinking about it from a presentation standpoint? I think you kind of said it, everything you see on Sunday. So I think we forgot that it all has to play well together. We had banners, we had um, guys injured on the field, we had um, coach handshakes after the game, stuff we'd never had mad before. But what we didn't do was pull it all together with the audio in mind. And that stood out in our reviews and it's done. It was like, this presentation was great except they forgot the audio. Yeah. Taking a step back, we really looked at, this has to be one of the most important parts of um, the game, and we have to think about it, put more people towards it, hiring professional writers, um, guys that had broadcast experience and play-by-play, -play, guys who have worked at writing other game stuff. Putting that type of effort into it and then thinking of it as a cohesive presentation instead of, hey, fire some random stuff that you would see on Sunday. Yeah, when we were, uh... You know, we talked about when we were with John week one last year and how you know that's sort of where game flow was born, right? But it was more than that. We at that time we didn't know what we were going to do in terms of our play-by-play -play commentary, whether or not it was we we thought maybe we wanted to go a new direction. You know, Hammond was great, but did we want to try something different to breathe some new life into it? And and that that Bengals Broncos game I think sealed it for you, didn't it? You know that game, the Bengals Broncos had actually. It was one of the only ones that was down to like a final play, final drive, so John switched it over to the big screen. So we all got to watch it and you know, I'm elbowing everyone like, hey, this is the Gus game, you know, just make sure you give it a listen. And sure enough, that play happens, Gus totally freaks out. You know, call of the year, it's like, that's it. That's, we, we definitely have him booked now. And so sure enough, we get back to the office the next week and everyone's like, you're Gus Johnson, we gotta get him, we gotta yeah. get him. So. Well, and the great thing about Gus too is as excited as we are about having him in the game this year because of his level of excitement, he's, he's just as excited about being in Madden. Yeah. I mean, he's, He's looking at this as an opportunity to, to really showcase his talent, and uh, you know it's it's a big deal. Uh, you know, Collinsworth, of course, is going to be back for his third season with us. And the two of them have never worked together, so you know, having them in the booth at the same time was really cool. You know, they, for Gus, it was neat getting to meet Chris, the, the the now famous Chris Collinsworth, who's the John Madden right. replacement this year. So. Uh, it's it's a big deal. We've got a great booth this year. We're really excited. So having that and in the story engine, how that evolved. I think last year we took pretty big leap forward in terms of the scenes and all the stuff that we had, but your point of just, you know, we were firing stuff off almost for the sake of firing it, whereas now you've got this sort of dynamic story engine that you can build a plot line throughout a game, right? Yeah, and like um, a good example is, our, again, our pregame with, um, we looked at it and Ian and I make fun of it actually every day. It's like kind of a running office joke where, um, you know, we talk about how everything we talked about in pregame could have been taken off Wikipedia. Um, just kind of banal facts about stadiums or city locations. Right. And there's not that emotional attachment. So this year with Story, we wanted to set up that game. Is it important? Is it a playoff game? Does, is weather really a factor? Let's not talk about it's perfectly mild out because it doesn't have <laughs> any kind of... <laughs> You, the, the plays have been pretty consistent. What's the line? Yeah, that's the halftime. The uh, yeah. number of plays were pretty similar. It's that just stuff uh, is maddening. pointless yeah. facts that really don't create any kind of emotional connection with the game. So um, first we want to set up that, and Gus does an amazing job of getting you like, I'm really here in a playoff game, or this is Thursday night football, or it's a holiday, holiday game. Um, and then you move on to the stories, and we have... I think it's over 900 different like QB versus QB combinations. So if you hear Roethlisberger versus uh, Eli Manning, it's going to talk about how they were drafted in the same class, or Breeze versus uh, Manning, if they're going to talk about last year's Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So there's all this stuff that it's not generic. Peyton Manning's such a great quarterback. Eli Manning's such a great quarterback. It knows they're brothers, and they're going to talk about it. You talk about making it more immersive, kind of like you're that you're in that stadium feel. What I think what we did with the uh, with the stadium chance this year was was totally a different way of thinking about it. I think it paid off. It was really a major focus of, of mine personally to make sure that we blew that out and got it right this year. And and you know the chance of getting every stadium correct, totally accurate, and not just chance but music. You know we've had we've never had any music in the stadium that's accurate. We've always just gotten our menu music and played it in little clips. Mm -hmm. But as you know, I mean, there's Crazy Train is played in every single stadium. <laughs> there's anthems, Rock and Roll Part 2, Gary Glitter. You know, you hear that everywhere. And so we went out and, and Phil, you know, worked on licensing these super, you know, recognizable songs so that 
playing your Madden game feels like this kind of great mix of being there as well as watching the broadcast, and that's that's what we were really going for. We even went to the next extra step of actually having the crowd chant to the music in yeah. some of those cases, which is a really nice effect. Yeah. What's your favorite chant? Uh, I like Zombie Nation. That's one of my favorites. The song. I mean, that's stuff we did a lot of research on. What plays after the Steelers score a touchdown? What do they play a kickoff? So it's Zombie Nation. Uh, um, guys like Keith Miller catch the ball and you hear Heath, and it just. It, it's not just the broadcast experience, because if you actually listen, rarely do you pick up the Vikings horn during a broadcast. So we wanted to deliver the experience of, we give you broadcast, but you actually feel like you've been to the stadium. It wasn't just a recreate what we see on TV. Madden NFL 11, August 10th, in stores everywhere. It's a wrap.